It is known as being like a Shiite Vatican city. Najaf, one of the most holy sites for the branch of Islam, a city embodying a less politicised version of Shiism that dominates in Iran. The people of the southern Iraqi city preferring to devote themselves to the study of religious texts and to keep out of politics. The city has repeatedly made history way beyond the Iraqi borders. It was here in the 1920s that the fatwa against British colonialism was issued. And it was here in August 2004 that the religious leader Moqtada al-Sadr led the insurgency against the US occupation. I'm calling on the Iraqi people to protest against the siege of Najaf and to drive the Americans out. We have to form a human shield to protect the city. In 2014, it was the turn of Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani to call an uprising, this time against the occupation of the Islamic State organization. And as before, the call of Najaf spread across the Shiite world. Saddam Hussein grasped the importance of the city. During his reign, he forbade pilgrimages to Najaf. And from 1991, thousands of Shiites were assassinated, over 9,000 of them religious leaders. Well, with the fall of Saddam, though, the city can finally stand tall again. It has now become a symbol of a Shiite military revival, attracting thousands of young militiamen who dream of becoming martyrs and later being buried in its famous cemetery, the largest Muslim cemetery in the world. Well, our correspondent Julian Fouché has revisited Najaf for the anniversary of the birth of the iconic figure of Shia Islam, Imam Ali. Millions of pilgrims from around the world gathering in the shrine that bears his name. Thirteen hundred years ago, this was just a mound of earth. A secret and nameless grave dug in the middle of an oasis. This is where the Shiites buried their first Imam, Ali. Today, that tiny strip of land has grown into one of Iraq's largest cities, Najaf, now home to one million people. Each religious celebration attracts millions of pilgrims. Countless buses, crammed with worshippers, jam the city's old streets. Suitcases of all sizes and colors pile up on the pavement. Today, people have come from other Iraqi cities and all around the Middle East. At times, it feels like there's someone here from every corner of the world. Where are you from? India, Hyderabad. We are from Iran. 120 people we have come to the together from Kashi, from Punjab, and for celebrating the birthday of Mawla Ali salam. And all of them are praying. These two days of celebrations will honor the birth of Imam Ali. His tomb lies behind these walls. This gold dome shrine, adorned with Persian carpets, is one of Islam's most sacred places. Every morning, Haider comes here to sing the praises of his spiritual guide. He is joined by hundreds of believers. Although he is just a singer, he is worshipped like the religious leaders who appointed him. I always sing for Imam Ali in his name. So people ask me to bless them, to cure the sick, for example. They come here asking me to pray for them. Allah has blessed me, and I am here to serve them. Haider was 16 when the U.S. Army besieged Najaf. In the summer of 2004, the shrine and its surroundings became the stronghold of a Shiite armed group. The US Army surrounded and shelled the old city, forcing thousands of Iraqis to flee. Haider's family was amongst them. The Battle of Najaf marked the beginning of the Shiite rebellion during the Iraq War. Haider returned to his hometown five years ago. Today, life has returned to normal, peaceful and carefree, the city's Euphrates River Bank reveals a different side of Iraq. 
أخدم سلطان النجف وعلى كفي حبة الرمال وعلى The singer is now married and the father of a son named Ali. For his future, I want his life to be different from mine. I lived surrounded by war, oppression. My youth was stolen from me. What I remember is the storm that swept over Iraq, everywhere. And that storm was a storm of blood. I remember being out of food, out of water, and having to ration what we had. Nowadays, with all the pilgrims, the authorities are focusing on rebuilding Najaf because the city has turned into the world's capital city for the Shiites. Consigned to oblivion under Saddam Hussein's rule, the Shiite city is now booming. Cranes pierce the skyline and construction sites seem to appear on every street corner. Najaf's international airport only opened in 2008 and is already overcrowded. Every year, it welcomes five million passengers, almost as many as Baghdad's airport. Just like the airport, the shrine will have to increase its capacity tenfold to meet growing visitor numbers. The religious authorities here have entrusted an Iranian company with the construction work. The great imam plans to turn the holy site into a mix of a religious center and an opulent consumer's paradise. There will be a tunnel for cars running from the entrance to underneath the shrine, and escalators will lead up to the holy sites. So there will be a massive parking, restaurants, hotels and museums to ensure worshippers are comfortable when visiting Imam Ali. Peace be upon him. The religious leader says the construction will be completed in little more than a year. He's under growing pressure to meet that deadline as an increasing number of religious students converge on the city from around the world. Hussein is South African and has come from Pretoria. South Africa is a mainly Christian country with barely 10,000 practicing Shiites. This book contains a lot of different prayers. No, it's not this one. Is this not the one you're looking for? Yeah, there's many things. This is a Shia market. Like There are Shia books that you can get, which were in other places you can't really get. You can't even get one of them. In a way, it is a paradise for me, because when it comes to the, the books, like there are books everywhere here. He was one of the first foreign students to arrive in the country. Who is he? As a chef from Tanzania. Okay. He has been in Iraq for two years and in Najaf for three months. Nowadays it's becoming better because people are getting used to seeing black people. It's not like in the beginning. In the beginning, oh, oh. Ah, so people would look, they would look. But, but, but one thing I, I, I love about the Iraqi people, even if they would look, they would come and greet and ask, where are you from, how are you? They, were, they, were, they had like, sort of like a, what, what, a curiosity. He was the very first South African to come and study Islam in Najaf after the war against the US ended. Hussein intends to return to his country as a Shiite leader, educated in Iraq, wearing the traditional turban. This is his school, one of the oldest and most respected in the city. It's supported by a powerful local imam, and about 60 foreign students eat, study and sleep here for free. They've come from Africa, Iran and Europe. Bilal is 19 and arrived from Birmingham last week. Is Arabic difficult? Arabic is very difficult, yes. <laughs> it's very, very necessary for how You know, you live in uh, Germany. Very necessary for how Arabic. Hussein and Bilal often speak to their families over the phone. 
especially after terror attacks, when they are reminded that Iraq is one of the most dangerous places in the world. My mother, she's not, she, at first, because every time she calls me, like I saw in the news, this, this and this happened. And then I told her, no, 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 this is not happening in Najaf, it's happening somewhere else. It's going to be a misconception, you know, that you know, Iraq is just all about the ISIS and the Daesh and all the wars going on, but that's only in certain places. I mean, it's like we can say Paris is a, uh, Paris is dangerous because it got bombed, right? Or even Brussels. Nevertheless, the Islamic State organization's territory lies only a hundred kilometers away from Najaf. Shiites have become the main target for the terrorist group. And in this city, the threat is ever present. This is the governor's escort, five low profile, but armored four by fours. The chief of the province is in one of them, but we don't know which one. He never rides twice in a row in the same car. He is a top target for the jihadists. I think they have always missed their target. Yes, they do plan terror attacks on Najaf, but they have always been foiled. I want Najaf to become one of the most beautiful cities in the world. This wish seems like a distant dream for most of Najaf's citizens, but especially these young ones. The governors visiting an orphanage for children who lost their parents in the conflict. For them, war is all they know and they have little idea of another reality. His name is Sajjad. His father was shot dead. He was a policeman. He knows that he's dead, but not who killed him. Handing out gifts, the governor speaks of his hope for a better future for these orphans. I came here today to meet the ones I believe to be the most important people for our community. The ones I believe will be the ones rebuilding Najaf in the future. There are dark forces at play right now, always targeting Najaf, looking to hit this province to destroy our imams. The war has left thousands of orphans in its wake. Many of those who died fighting are buried here. It is the largest Muslim graveyard in the world, the final resting place of five million Shiites. Rows of fresh graves stretch as far as the eye can see. These militiamen are all Shiite and didn't die at the hands of American soldiers, but a rather different enemy, the Islamic State organization. Gravediggers are working day and night. Here, right next to them, the Iraqi flag has been draped over a coffin. This religious leader heads a militia of 300 fighters taking on Daesh in northern Iraq. Tonight, Abdul Latif is burying one of them. This morning at dawn, Daesh opened fire on my brigade, the Ashura Katiba. We had two casualties, two martyrs, and 20 men were wounded. Like tens of thousands of men from Najaf, these Iraqis had left everything behind to repel the Sunni jihadists. Only one person lifts the body. Don't drop it. The number of Shiites who have died fighting in the past two years remains secret. The authorities refuse to reveal the numbers for fear of sapping the troops' morale. Abdul Latif invites us to his home. He insists on showing us his brigade's achievements. These pictures were taken on the front lines some 100 kilometers away from Najaf. Corpses are laid out like war trophies. He was a suicide bomber, but I killed him before he could blow himself up, and I took a picture as a souvenir. Often under fire, these militias are accused of committing war crimes by human rights groups. We have no choice but to defend ourselves, defend our children, our land, our beliefs and our shrines. It's totally normal. It's a fight to protect the Shia way of life. Two million of them have gathered tonight to celebrate the birthday of their beloved Imam. They sing, dance, and most of all, they pray.
In a corner of the shrine, Haider is singing from his pulpit. The worshippers beat their chest to commemorate the martyrdom of their imams. The militia leader Abdul Latif and some of his men have also come to the shrine to pray, but also to gauge their popularity. Thank you, thank you. You are in our hearts. Thank you. You are in my prayers. I pray for your victory in the fight to defend our honor. Thank you, thank you. Greeted by Pakistanis, Lebanese and Iranians, these new heroes are quickly surrounded by supporters trying to get a picture or an autograph. Without us, the militias, all these people who have come from Iran or Pakistan wouldn't be able to visit the shrine. If we weren't defending this holy place and Iraq, all these pilgrims wouldn't be here. Najaf seems to be the heart of the Shiite rebellion in Iraq like it was against the U.S. 10 years ago and against Sunni armed groups today. But for one night, the city will try to forget the violence and embrace its status as the Shia world's spiritual capital. Julianne Fouché revisiting Najaf for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. You can watch it again, though, and all our previous editions as well on our website. That's at france24.com. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.